and welcome to the DMs Book Club, a podcast where we read about some Dungeons and Dragons and discuss how we might include it in our role playing campaigns. With me back again, I was so excited before when we talked about Do Forgot Realms. I brought him back out of retirement, brief retirement. Yeah. Is, uh, we've got Matthew Whitby on as a guest host today. Hello, Matt. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm really good, Fiona. Thank you very much for inviting me back. Yeah, I, I do feel like it's either busting out of retirement or like busting out of like my coffin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there's lots of debris as you come in, a yeah, bit of yeah, dust exactly. in your hair as you're coming back onto the podcast screen it's been a little while since we spoke to you because obviously yeah. last time you were on you talked about doing forgotten realms which has just sort of come out in the month or so uh, beforehand got a good response uh, yes. which i was very pleased about and it's yeah I, i've used i sprinkled actually a few little bits and pieces in my campaigns oh. and and floated it to other people as well and they were like this sounds fucking amazing <laughs> no, thank you. no honestly i was i was blown away by reception and no thank you so much for bringing me on last time to kind of like again it's it's podcasts that kind of help mm. spread the word about the, the stuff we create so no, I really yeah. appreciate it. No, no worries. But yeah, no, no I'm, I'm excited to, to uh, have a bit of a, was it, trap chat? Trap chat. Yes, exactly. Well, then I will hand it over to you slightly, uh, even though I only chose the topic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Matt, what is our topic of choice today for this DMs Book Club? Yes, we're talking about all things traps. Yes. And I imagine this, this can probably go across all the from spectrum from like a bear trap on a rope all the way to like... Uh, the Rubik's cubes of complexity. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 traps are interesting. Mm. Uh, I think last time I was on, I had my little door rant about yes. how, like, if you put a closed door in front of a, a party, there are groups that would be essentially paralyzed, um, <laughs> just just by just the, the nature of like, how do we approach this door? Can mm-hmm. do we taste the door? Do we like you know? I think traps are fantastic resources to like slow down the pace of play Mm -hmm. just because obviously if you have like a dungeon setting and stuff like that and the party is kind of going through and they're just speeding through and you want to you know maybe advise a little bit caution traps are a good way to kind of do that but this is where I add the the, the kind of like the caveat or like the the little little asterisks asterisks. and this has been said like again the um, books about traps are are, are pretty pretty good kind of inform that like the traps kind of need, need to make a little bit of sense yes so, like, say it's not a dungeon. Say you're going into the uh, manor of a mayor and you're mm. trying to, like, I don't know, save the mayor, maybe even kill the mayor, whatever it is and stuff like that. And you come across, like, again, a bear trap. What's that doing in in, in someone's hallway? What's going on with that? What's going yeah. on? And, you know, unless you've kind of laid the groundwork where, you know, the mayor is a very paranoid or, mm. you know, like they've booby trapped their entire house, that makes sense. But. Mm. Yeah, it's always the traps of like, okay, well, is the trap, is it meant to defend a location? You yeah. know, is it meant to, is it meant to kind of like kill people outright? Is it meant to just yeah. send people running? And you can have like a lot of fun with, let's say, for example, the classic Indiana Jones kind of going into a temple with stealing mm-hmm. some sort of idol. Mm-hmm. I imagine a lot of the traps in that place are depending on the god. Let's say it's a good aligned god. Mm-hmm. The idol has great power that they don't want it falling into the wrong hands. Mm-hmm. The good aligned nature kind of implies that maybe they're against or would be less inclined to just have murder traps. Nothing but like, uh, was it like uh, spheres of annihilation? Yeah, right. <laughs> just everywhere yeah, yeah they probably won't make too much of an appearance as well but yeah. the idea of like illusion magic to mislead mm. or a powerful kind of like magic that can like the create the fear effect um mm. and you can sort of see how it kind of builds the world building of the idea of like there is something here worthy of protection mm. and this is how they kind of go about kind of doing it I think you've hit the nail on the head completely for me. There was a big section uh, or a big a big line, which I underlined several times, which was like, make traps meaningful, yeah. which is like, I feel like that's my running slogan for yeah. um, any political thing. Yeah. yeah. And I just, yeah. What's the purpose of it? And it's interesting because I remember when I first started D&D and I'd be like, oh, this monster's really cool. I'm going to put that in. Mm-hmm. Oh, this monster's very cool. I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And I can imagine people getting very excited about traps because it is one of those things where it's very part of a dungeon. You know, the walls are coming in, the, you know, the, the ceilings coming down but it's like why is it there? your example of the manor is a perfect example it's like as a random bear trap on the floor great what does that mean why you know like unless you had the lead up to it mm-hmm. and the purpose for it that may have been mentioned or not or maybe it's just subtly hinted at to the players it's just getting to a point where you're just throwing stuff at them and yeah. similarly like you said as well it talked about this temptation of being like you want to throw lots of traps at your yeah. players because you find it super fun yeah. what happens though is your players go ah oh, we've been bitten twice now and jeff's pretty much dead we're gonna search the whole dungeon yeah. to find everything and that defeats the point of it because i guess mm-hmm. not everyone loves a puzzle and i feel that like traps are like a very 
little dangerous puzzle that, that is yeah. like I can imagine that's that like you said it's sort of a Rubik's cube I'm definitely thinking of the Hellraiser puzzle box yeah, yeah. where uh oh that's a complex trap that's it, waiting to go off and you're being surrounded by monsters and stuff yeah. like that I think you're right and I think kind of like something you say of like the idea of like putting in too many is like you shouldn't be using traps as like a gotcha yes I, again the idea of like making them kind of like meaningful and stuff like that like obviously you can use traps to kind of deter or, or kind of like uh, punish like bad player behavior if mm. a player is consistently touching glowing items that kind of like you know magical items that like are ominously perched on like a pedestal uh, <laughs> chances are one of them will be trapped at some point and stuff like that, and it's the kind of iconic kind of moment but then also on the other side of like sometimes if you make the traps like not meaningful in the sense but mm. for like purpose so you take like classic like everyone's favorites like cobalt engineers or like the kind of chaotic goblins traps for the sake of traps those mm. situations can be fun because mm-hmm. the traps themselves can become environmental hazards in a mm-hmm. combat scenario, traps aren't always just for like exploration. No. It's also a thing in combat and stuff like that. You know, uh, for example, like a spike, like a spike pitfall trap or whatever it is called and stuff like that. One situation, you have it as like, okay, this is like a, a slow exploration. How do we navigate over it? If you throw enemies on the other side of that corridor, suddenly the dynamic has changed in which you know the trap becomes uh, a valuable resource to the players. Mm. Say you found a trap and the players have seen the tripwire, they've kind of determined the trap and stuff like that. I think I'm personally kind of like I'm I'm not the sort that would make each person kind of make the check no. to kind of get over the trap again and no, again. No, 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 no. There's kind of certain traps I think kind of require like that. Yes. But there's no urgency and stuff like that, and it's just kind of like a slow kind of thing. It's kind of just going to reward someone for rolling bad, yeah. and that that never feels good to be that player of like, okay, well I know the traps there. I've described narratively how I'm doing everything to not hit the trap. Mm-hmm. but i rolled a, a seven and now <laughs> and now i have set it off in yeah. some way yeah absolutely but i do like your point about using them in combat because again it doesn't really talk about them here it's it, again it talks about them being used against the players or they're exploring it's an exploration thing rather than a combat thing and you know what i think that would be beneficial to have a section about using them in combat and it talks about how again another line i underlined be open to players reusing or being able to disable it in a way that isn't necessarily described Mm -hmm. in the description because it says not every trap is designed to be player proof which i thought was brilliant because i can imagine like again we've I'm sure you've done it as well. You're, you've set up a riddle or a puzzle and they're not getting it. Mm-hmm. And you could be sat there going, no, that's not it. No, <laughs> that's not it. No, that's not it. Or you could be like, that's a really clever answer. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's yeah. move on. You know, like and it's just better that way. So I, I like that. It encourages you, actively encourage you. But I love the idea that you could, you, you know, players... Again, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm smart enough as a player <laughs> to use that in combat because I'd be probably avoiding it. But I can imagine that if you if a player does do that, goes, yeah. can I run towards it and leap over where I know the pit trap is and then anyone else will fall into it? Yeah. I, I would reward that so much as a DM. I, yeah. I'm fully on board with that. I think that's again, it goes into like the idea of like your DM should be the player's biggest cheerleader. Absolutely. You want to facilitate your players doing cool stuff. Yeah. But I guess it kind of goes to say is like, I guess that comes into the like, design of traps. Because mm. with the idea of mind that like if the players are smart enough, like say for example, you have like a poisoned crossbow trap kind of built into the walls of that, the players in depending on certain levels of that, they probably have ways to take that crossbow out of the trap. Mm-hmm. And now you kind of have to be aware of like, okay, now I've because I made the poison on the uh, crossbow so strong. Now the players have essentially, like, low level, they might have access to a, a very powerful poison crossbow. Mm. These are things that you kind of have to keep in mind and stuff like that. It goes back to the, the mana thing that I was saying and stuff like that. If they had a sphere of annihilation, to keep using that example and stuff like that, it doesn't make sense. And mm. then you are perhaps giving the players access to a sphere of annihilation, <laughs> which oh. yeah, it, it may cause one <laughs> or two problems, you know? Um, or eventually players may use it to solve all their problems. <laughs> it definitely would be a MacGuffin type thing. I love that idea. Let's dive in quickly then to the differences. So again, some people might only know the traps from the DM's guide, but also uh, I think what most of this sort of our discussion will be around Xanathar's one, which expands quite significantly on this. So like in the DM's guide, it does it an interesting thing, which... I guess it, with Xanathar's, it changes, obviously, immediately. It splits it up into mechanical and magical traps mm-hmm. and saying that there's purely mechanical traps and then there's magical traps and then there's simple and complex on top of that. Whereas Xanathar's goes, forget all that, just simple and complex. Don't worry about anything else. Yeah. And I quite like that. It's, I, I, again, it must be a streamlining thing, etc. Because I was like, oh, yeah, well, mecha- well, that makes sense, mechanical and magical. Mm-hmm. But of course, you can now intermix them and change them about, which makes 
total sense. Yeah. And it's interesting, there are examples that they have. So yeah, as I said before, the DM's guide is about managing rather than creating traps, mm-hmm. which Xanapog then goes into a lot more detail about it. Out of all the traps, it sort of as gives an example, eight traps in total, six mechanical, so you know, like a collapsing roof, yeah. various different varieties of pits, <laughs> uh, which I, I quite like, that made me laugh, yeah. um, like a net that falls and picks people up, all that sort of thing. And then the magical ones, as you sort of rightly said, is um, a fire breathing statue or a sphere of annihilation, yeah, it's, it's, and it's like, like wow, that's um, that's that's two very like big jumps essentially, yeah. and and most importantly, it doesn't talk about necessarily the levels here, which I think Xanaphos then goes on to because this is the thing: if you're faced with say the fire breathing statue at level four, mm-hmm. you're pretty much toast. That's yeah. the end of it, you know. So it, it didn't seem to be any rooms of it. It kind of felt like here are the traps best of luck you know it's mm-hmm. going it's definitely going to be more luck based that you see these things etc but then going on to xanathar's it sort of nicely i think breaks it down in this idea of like yep yeah, so look at the level and the leaf lethality, lethality sorry of it mm-hmm. there's the, the triggers the effects uh, and then obviously it goes into different effects depending on what kind of trap it is and then the countermeasures which makes i mean it's very simple it's straightforward but i quite liked it how it spread it out Compared to the previous edition of it, yeah, no, I must admit, I love, I love all the tables, like the kind yes. of, uh, it kind of makes it like if you're coming up with a trap on the fly. But no, so funny enough, uh, so I was part of, uh, I believe it was the Acerax collection of traps, mm-hmm. uh, which was a product which, funny enough, was a collection of of complex traps. Wow, I kn- I knew I picked you for this episode yeah, yeah, no, for no, a no, reason. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, so what it was is, so I don't know if you remember, there was D and D or Wizards of the Coast had official like Dungeon Masters competition, mm-hmm. and to enter the competition as a fact. You had to put together a, a complex trap. Correct. Yes, I do remember that. Yeah. So what it was is uh, a bunch of people who maybe a bunch of people who hadn't made it through the first round, who still had these great traps sitting around. Uh, we all kind of gathered together and and put them in in a you know Acerac. I mean, wait, if you're thinking of someone to base a book around Acerac, the kind of um... Tomb of Horrors is basically one big trap, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. It's, it's traps all the way down. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that was kind of nice to kind of bring bring all those traps together, but. The, oh. Again, I think what was really nice about that exercise though, was because we were using Xanathar's kind of format. Mm. And it, it gives you everything you can kind of need, kind of like set up and kind of create a trap from the ground up. It gives you all the things to consider. And from a, both a player and kind of DM standpoint, it kind of covers both sides of the, the, the spectrum. Yeah. And the thing I found interesting in certainly Xanathar's, and I'd be interested to hear about uh, the Acerax Traps book, yeah. uh, and you might know a lot more about this than me. Obviously, they're example ones. They didn't really cover too much of the higher level ones, bar one right at the end, which is a super complex one. Yes. Like, so, so it goes, so for the threat level, so the beginning thing is when you determine what ranges it could be sort of dangerous for essentially so you've got like levels one to four five to ten eleven to sixteen and then seventeen to twenty mm-hmm. and then you have moderate danger <laughs> dangerous danger and yeah. deadly threat you know that sort of thing and i'm like what about it's fine you're like oh it's a bit of an owie There's no, <laughs> it's definitely like moderate is like yeah. i guess because obviously any lower i guess you'd, you'd be fine but i just no, like that I, idea like <laughs> oh i do like the idea of like there's a, a step before moderate where it's just like this is it's just nice it's not, yeah. like is it it's an inconvenience <laughs> like an inconvenience threat i'd love that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'd put that in yeah but so in that Aseric one, mm-hmm. uh, again, that might have been based on, as you're saying, that DM's challenge thing, depending on, I guess it told you what level it had to be and what the threat was. Was there a range of like um, higher levels? I, do you remember? I can't remember exactly. I think it was literally just like design a trap. Mm. Uh, so I did a, uh, a complex trap of fifth to 10th level. I, I went, as so I actually, in the head of this, I, I went and kind of grabbed, grabbed the document. I love it. So th- yeah, this, I think a version of this does exist in the, the uh, Ace of Rex collection of complex tracks. But mine was essentially, it was a, a long corridor mm-hmm. where on the other end of the spectrum, there is a, a, a statue of Ramanos, which I believe is the, it's the dead god of the, the, the bullywugs. There's just a big, big frog known for eating. They sleep a lot, they eat a lot. That's that's a big kind of thing. <laughs> and what the kind of uh, the trap is, is once you kind of go to the shrine at the end of the corridor, you collect your things, and then slowly the floor kind of begins to kind of like shift open, <gasps> revealing a uh, a large kind of, essentially like a slide under the ground. Uh-oh. Uh, mm-hmm. And the slide leads into, funny enough, another giant frog mouth. Uh-oh. Nope, so nope, nope. As the floor, as the floor kind of gives away and stuff like this frog mouth beneath you and stuff like slowly climbs up the slope oh. heading towards you and stuff like that so it means you have to get from where you started to the other end of the corridor yeah mm-hmm. and if you fall down the slope you've got running less and less time because this frog mouth is getting oh. sooner 
<laughs> yeah, that was that was a kind of whole, whole track. It's you know pl- uh, playing on uh, a bunch of things going on, quite complicated. Yes. And this, I, I guess, so this is a trap that I don't think would work as well in like a combat scenario. Sure. And and that's what I think uh, to compare it to the kind of the complex traps in the mm. Xanathar's. There's a lot going on, and it's yes. kind of these are almost presented as you would enter initiative for something yes. like this in order to mm. kind of work out all these kind of moving parts because things happen on initiative count 20. And I think that's the big difference between like simple traps and complex traps is that yes. complex traps almost become an encounter in their own right. Correct, yeah. With many moving parts in which, you know, the players have to quickly work out the solution. Mm-hmm. Whereas simple traps, it's the difference between like a single a single skill check to kind of like undo it versus, again, I don't remember the solution for this, uh, the frog mouth trap. I was going to say, uh, is it just outrunning and hope for the best? That's what I, it feels I think like. so, yeah. <laughs> you, you just have to get to the, the other end of the corridor. Yeah. There's more to the trap going on where like if people, sh- like shrinking magic going Ooh. on. So I, I think what it was is it's not that the floor opens. Uh, it's mm. more that there, there are the holes that, that are kind of like, it's a grate. Right. So what the kind of trap tries to do, it tries to shrink you to a size in which you fall through the grate oh. onto the slide. Uh, yeah, but that's what I mean. This is why maybe uh, the first, this is my first draft of it. Why maybe it didn't go through to the next round of the, the Dungeon Master Challenge. But it was a fun exercise um, yeah. in kind of putting that together and trying working out, um, you know, the, I don't know, the nature of a complex trap encounter like this. Yeah, and you pointed out that the difference, again, just in case it wasn't clear. So yeah, a simple trap here is a, a one and done, essentially. Like, yeah. you, you touch the, the doorknob in uh, Kevin McAllister's house, you burn your hand and the door breaks, right? Whereas a complex one, as you said, it has initiative, it, it might have several goes. It says to treat it like a legendary monster, yeah. which I love. Because this idea of the effects, as soon as it's the trigger goes off, that, you know, you, you walk into the hallway, that and then as, as long as you are in the hallway or in the space, it continues on. That's usually what the main one it is but it doesn't have to be that you have like you know uh, active effects dynamic effects which is like the longer that you're in this area the longer the trap goes on it mm. might get quicker so it gives the example of a, a corridor with sides going across and then a crushing it, it felt very crash bandicoot yeah. in a way you know one of those running through the temple ones where yeah you've got you've got you've got to dodge the sides going to get, get past me and then at the end is a fear effect which will send you back the other way in case you fail so you're constantly dodging back and forth yeah. which sounds incredible but also very terrifying not not like Crash Bandicoot at all. <laughs> I mean, Crash Bandicoot has some scary, scary moments. And then constant effects. Uh, so like, you know, what's it going on there? So yeah, all these different elements of it. But more importantly, I think, uh, is like that sort of countermeasures and disabling stuff. So again, back to the simple traps. What Again, a great piece, piece of advice, which I think I'm just going to carry on forward because I, I hate going what's your passive perception? I'm just going to write it down somewhere and just stick it like on, yeah. on my screen so I know. And then for I can be like, oh, you see in the light a tripwire, etc. Mm-hmm. I just point it out because that's the thing. It requires people's passive perceptions to yeah. pick up and then therefore they can then disable it should they want to or work out a way like certainly with the simple traps there's always a way to easily disable it or there's mm. a, it's just made for a one and done yeah. as the complex tra- traps because there's a series of actions you might need a serious number of checks yeah. to disable bits of parts of it I, again I'm, I'm the same thing where i always have my players pass perception around because it's, it's just easier to kind of set the pace because you can kind of say this player notices something and kind of keep keep the ball rolling mm-hmm. but working with passive perception it kind of rewards you know the players getting stronger and stuff like that yes. you know, as, as the kind of game continues and stuff like that simple traps and stuff like that like take the you know the classic trip one and stuff like that it should be catching up low level pies because yep. you know they're inexperienced but once you hit kind of like level 10s level 15s and stuff like that it's almost expected that like you are maybe dungeon delving experts. You've been around. You've seen a few trap wires now that you kind of know what to look mm. out for. I kind of like that. So it doesn't punish stupidity. So like for me, for example, I'm, again, separate to this D&D conversation, but I've played Alien RPG. Mm-hmm. And of course, I've now, after the first session where I almost died because I went into a room I didn't look up, I now go into every room <laughs> and look up. Uh, <laughs> and that's and that was definitely a player thing yeah. rather than the mechanics. But it was just so funny because I'm like, I go into the room and say, oh, okay. And then it's like something comes onto my shoulder. I'm like, oh, I should have looked up and they're like yes you should have looked up yeah. before you went into I, the room <laughs> I must be that's like a human thing though it's like there's so many rooms I walk into that I don't look up humans yeah. just by default I tell don't. you all, all humans out yeah. who listen to this podcast yeah. I guess you are human please look up where every room you go into just in case but, there is something about to go on to you there but I guess you, you know you make a really good point though because then it kind of talks almost about like traps almost kind of like set player behavior almost mm-hmm. and it's that thing of like again if you are consistently using traps in the same manner and stuff like that then you can become predictable. And and mm-hmm. that's why sometimes thinking about who designed the trap, who made the trap, how it came in, can kind of break you out of the cycles of like, 
it's mm-hmm. it's not always a trip wire it's not always a, a dodgy door handle <laughs> um you know it's not always the bucket hanging over the door or like yeah. the alien on the ceiling it, it kind of <laughs> you know it changes up the face a little bit yeah agreed the, the one thing is like trap trap should be fun and mm-hmm. i think that, that, that there are definitely situations which sometimes it is that kind of like okay this is punishing like risky behavior versus mm-hmm. okay you now have a problem in front of you that you now need to solve because mm-hmm. I guess there's, there's a difference between um, take like the classic kind of like pitfall traps or something mm-hmm. like that. Like if characters are kind of walking down the corridor without checking, they haven't got their 10 foot pole out to kind of pop a thing. You have the players fall into a hole and whether that's kind of meant to be like a, again, like a health tax or something mm-hmm. like that where you're trying to like, you know, burn resources and stuff like that. Or is it the fact that like, okay, well now the hole goes to a whole separate part of the dungeon. Yes. And that completely kind of like, so now the kind of now veers the party off where like they either choose to split the party or they, you know, they all now kind of got dive down this hole. And I will say in Tomb of Horrors as well, there's quite a few of those things where you'd be like, I remember distinctly like halfway through, there's like four pit traps in a row. And of course, that by the fourth one, like, we're fucking done with this. So they're not going to, you know, they all have jumped over it. Whereas in fact, at the bottom of that one, there's a secret door that leads yep. to the rest of the dungeon. That's bloody cruel. <laughs> because they just basically just go into like a, I think it's just like literally a, a dead end which is then a big trap in itself mm. uh, which I won't necessarily spoil but yeah it's just one of those things where you're like hmm it talks about the purpose of that dungeon and let, let's talk about that in a way so it's certainly Tomb of Horrors mm. is created by a Serac who's you know this evil demi and it's literally designed to stop people coming into the dungeon as, as a fake ending yeah. technically um, <laughs> to stop them getting the treasure and I think this comes into uh, we did do an episode a little while ago about designing a dungeon talking about the purpose of it as well if you're marring it up with a particular dungeon mm. uh, yeah talking about that purpose as you said before you know these traps are they meant to alarm to alert someone that knows somebody here or are they delaying someone are they restraining so that they're going to take more damage mm. or as you sort of said are they slaying them are they just killing them outright so i think it's that is quite important when you're designing a trap again specifically for a dungeon Mm -hmm. working out how which one of those four sort of main purposes matches up with how if you're designing a dungeon straight off or if you're using a published dungeon you know marrying up with that so i do i do think that yeah starting from that point as you as you've said pretty much that what is the purpose of this trap you know, does it marry up with the objectives of the creator who's put it there, etc.? And I feel like you can be fairly kind of creative and think of like traps in a different sense outside of dungeon. Mm. Say you're doing like I don't know, like a, a chasing hound or, or like an event in like a city or something like that. Mm. The I think was it the effect of like a bear trap is being like, taking damage and being restrained. Yes, you could equate that to essentially uh, someone peddling their wares mm. on the streets and stuff like that. In the same way that like it is a trap. You know, it's something that like maybe, you know, a players with high enough passive perception could notice this person who's aggressively <laughs> peddling their wares that in a chase scenario and stuff like that is equivalent to a, a stepping on a bear trap. Yeah. Or, you know, take like a, a jungle kind of situation and stuff like that where you could kind of have, you know, like plants or vines that mm-hmm. function the same way as traps do. You know, they can entangle and snare, poison, do all these same things, but it's it's no longer in that kind of like dungeon kind of like mm. environment. So that there is a lot you can kind of do with traps. And I think like, obviously, it's hard not to kind of detach traps from the classic kind of like dungeon. True. It, yeah. It's my it's my default, you know, I was talking about like, uh, you know, dungeons and uh, the kind of next thing of like, I don't know how to describe the, the trap laden like mayor's house. Uh, that, that is now like, it just, they, they just exist, you know, there's like the murder mansions. That just I, I of... mean, you hear all the time about people doing heists and obviously then it's suddenly a big trapped thing. So yeah, it totally makes sense uh, in that front. But you're right. I do like the idea of like chases. Yeah, I guess you call them environmental hazards, but reskinning the traps here and making them in more environmental but also like if they've got guards and you know like I'm, I'm talking about real life now but you know when yeah. they use like the sort of the oh, I can't remember what it's called but when they throw like the things across the road to, yep. to bump the tires something similar there for the for the players as well to get entangled in some sort of goo or whatever yeah. uh yeah so I love that as a rethinking what you think is a trap as a delaying tactic as well. And yeah, similar thing. You could make it so it's natural traps mm-hmm. uh, in the jungle or in a forest area to protect or keep out people from a certain community that they've they've worked with the local plant life to grow mm-hmm. and it's difficult and then they get caught up and then obviously they come and get released and like, yeah, you, you're not supposed to be here. Yeah. Go away, you know, that sort of thing. And that's what, again, I think the, what the Zansos book does does really nice because they do detail, like, as you mentioned, the, the purposes behind a trap. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they, they honestly, like, I think they can be used in a lot of places. I know it's, it's hard... Sometimes when you think about like designing traps, kind of creating them and stuff like that, it does feel like 
you're trying to go out your way to be evil. Um, <laughs> unless they are the kind of like the traps which are just like kind of like protective or mm-hmm. you know, they're kind of like trying to deter people like, no, please don't, please don't go this kind of way and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You do kind of have to think a little like a, a little a little sick of twisted. You're like, how do I like um, create something? Yeah. That, that, it, it, traps are evil in their own kind of like I, you know what? It's it's so true. Cause yeah, again, a lot of the traps we've been talking about, you know, mentioning like the sphere of annihilation. So it usually is like it's hurting, isn't it? It's yeah. less, less, less sort of like restricting and pushing away. But I do like that idea of like, like, like you gave the example of the the good aligned god mm. temple, like all those traps. They will they hurt? Say, for example, uh, evil aligned characters or evil natured characters, undead, all that sort of thing. So again, you could really go into the details of like this trap is only triggered if there is an undead or something like that, or, or there is stuff on the walls that indicate there are other things nearby and all that sort of thing. So I quite like that. <laughs> going on slightly so looking at like once you've got the purpose of the trap as we sort of mentioned before the level and lethality of it but what i quite liked as you sort of have mentioned quite a bit there is these tables uh certainly for um complex traps and xanathars mm-hmm. where you have the trap save dc and the attack bonus tables you've got the damage severity by level and then you have the spell equivalent by level and so the very straightforward essentially if you're like i want to have it at this level and at this level of fret mm-hmm. um then you can work out okay these are going to be the checks to get out of it you know you've got some really baselines there but this is where i find it interesting so going back to before when i was saying about in the dm's guide it talked about separating magical and mechanical mm-hmm. now it talks about like well you could always combine spells yeah. and their effects to do stuff and that for me is just like uh, it's, it's this galaxy brain moment i'm like yeah. oh <laughs> like, i'm like oh my god because again it's just reskinning mm-hmm. s- spells but if you describe it in a certain way that the player's gonna go oh my god what is this oh how can we use it it's gonna kill us you know and i yeah. just I, I just love that as a result. Because what is it? I mean, like, yeah, I'm looking at the table now. It's like the example is like a ninth level spell plus a fifth level spell mm-hmm. as like for setting off like a, a, a spell trap, which I think could be equivalent of like, it's a, it's a trap that casts slow on the player, then casts like disintegrate on them. Mm-hmm. Whatever the two spells are and stuff like that, they complement each other to make it all all the worse. Yeah, so you could even have those two spells or you could have one of those spells up to ninth level. Yes. So like fireball, it's just incinerate you know <laughs> it's, it's a big one it's... but yeah so i think it's, it's it is worth thinking about like in general because i again my brain because i am a very simple-minded person i'm like oh right so there'll be lots of physical stuff so i'm still thinking of mechanical traps when actually having a mixture between having that crash bandicoot sort of theme mm-hmm. where all that's all the magic stuff and i love the idea of using debuffs like you just said like slow is such a great spell for debuffing so any having a debuff spell whilst there's still like caught in the area of effect where more physical things are happening yeah. like the swords are coming towards them all the arrows and all that sort of thing yeah i really I, like that I, I think as well when it comes to like the building what you're saying about like the magical mechanical kind of divide is obviously they do have vastly like different solutions so like yes. I, and, and i think that's something always that's fun to kind of play around with like with magical traps and stuff out you do run into thing of like a third level spell i think the spell magic mm-hmm, is third mm-hmm. level. I th- yeah yep mm-hmm. that can like most traps will just be kind of turned like inert just by a single third level spell which mm-hmm. which is fine if you're trying to like kind of reuse their sources and stuff like that and then it's more the nice. case of like i i know some dms kind of have their gut instinct of like well no it's like it's like a night level spell so it this spell magic doesn't work mm. and and that's always the balance of like or you go like the kind of like it's magic through runes and mm-hmm. okay well then you can kind of like deface the runes and that's what some of these fun is like to you know understand again again like not to sound like a broken record but goes mm-hmm. by like who's making the traps mm-hmm. and more from like a dm perspective so far is, is having a dungeon where it's like again maybe created by like a kobold that's going to be very mechanically heavy you know not yes. good mechanic as any of them mean no not at all but that's part of the fun is because then you take the rogue who's maybe very you know uh, proficient at disarming traps now is trying to have to design a trap that's designed by essentially a three-year-old um that is still just as deadly as any other trap yeah. and stuff at but it it doesn't you know fit the standard kind of logic yeah. i love the idea now that because you just mentioned again because of the cobalt idea it's just a big version of mouse trap but really poorly designed and yeah. very rusty uh so you're dodging out the way yeah. of stuff and and you can see how like so the you know to go back to what we're talking about like acerac the tomb of horrors and stuff like that mm-hmm. is He's such an evil bastard. <laughs> yes. That's the of he uses both. Sometimes a combination of both. Sometimes it's all, you know, it, I think more often it's probably leaning on more like high magic mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, and some of those traps do have the taste where like it cannot be dispelled or, you know, it's, yeah. it's because sometimes there are traps that like, again, you some traps kind of like in order to function the way you intended, 
they, there might have to be an anti-magic field somewhere or some kind of effect in place. And that that's fun and stuff like that. Mm. But it's more the case of like, that shouldn't be the standard. No. You know, if every trap room is like, it's an anti-magic shield, like there's there's a statue that casts counter spell on like I don't know yeah. like it just goes yeah counter spell <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a statue just says it's a statue of a guy like this and it just says don't dispel my trap yeah <laughs> please don't yeah I've had that fear where they just where we've done something you're like, oh can I use magic here oh I I dispel magic and it is like but you just said it before that idea of like okay it's fine yeah using up their resources there was a um, a couple of books I read which of course the name I forgot now but it talked about like designing a campaign and stuff and like how do you use checks for things and making valuable checks and it's like you know if they get damaged and or they have to use stuff on the way to the big boss that's totally fine you want them to use up their resources so that the bigger boss the big challenge is you know they're like oh I don't have yeah. as many resources so you shouldn't feel worried that they oh yeah they defeated your trap but at what cost yeah. you know because the magic is very you know it is quite important to certain people's campaigns and stuff so yeah I like that idea like not worrying and not having that instant gut of like uh, uh the, no, no magic here no magic yeah. you know it's because yeah that's no fun otherwise and then it kind of that's why uh like complex traps are a little bit more appealing is because mm -hmm. they're made of multiple parts so mm -hmm. say you do have like a trap in which it's it's the boulder from like indiana jones it's the kevin McAlster electrified door it's <laughs> i don't know it's also like uh some poison ivy like uh hypnosis gas going in the room and stuff like that. if the players decide okay i'm gonna use magic i want to get rid of the kevin McAlster electric door handle great i mean they've still got other things to deal with and stuff like that. And, yes. and the trap still kind of like is dangerous in a situation to kind of deal with mm -hmm. but again it's 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 one available solution to the players that you again you shouldn't intentionally take away from them and stuff like that no. it, sometimes it's the fun of like if the trap has one like pressure point mm. that's a design choice so you yes. know it's, it's the idea of like if you make it a very kind of interesting room and stuff like that where it's like has an off button in the middle of the room the nature of the trap is getting to that button yes and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of fun you can kind of have with that yeah. alternatively you can go with the thing where it's like no no there are many separate parts that the player's going to have to go around and, you know, they have to scratch off four, like, runes, like, to get the trap to turn off or four yeah. spells. The next bit is, like, the trigger itself. What is it? Is it that single thing or is it multiple things? And I quite like to, again, it talked about it here saying if the trigger could be obvious, but the nature of it is not. So if they spot it, mm -hmm. they could still set it off because they'd be like, hmm, what does this do? Yeah. You know, follow the line and it goes into the wall and you're like, I'm sure it's fine yeah. and then not worry about it. But yeah, I like this idea of like, you have the big button, it's obvious there, but then it's not, nothing's written on it. You're like, I wonder if, I, and, and yeah, that it talks about in complex traps, as you sort of write the book, usually the, to disarm it, you have to be in the area of effect. Yeah. You can't necessarily do it from the outside or it's at the end of the trap. Like they're getting, you got like those sort of sides, like uh, whatever you get through it. And then there's like a, a lever that yeah. you could like, do on that side so yeah yeah i mean that's the other thing is like it, it, sometimes it makes sense so like if the trap is like you know to block a corridor it might make sense that like the way to turn the trap off is on the far end of the corridor where you know mm -hmm. people have already passed through can turn it off or turn it back on again actually that's a good point as well because it does talk about in designing complex traps as well is map is like another important section there and we've mm -hmm. talked about it again just now really just like where would it be best place to make this trap where would it go and so it talks obviously like choke holds or like very long mm -hmm. corridors are usually good but again you could be putting it out in like the dense jungle or, mm -hmm. or through a city or whatever so it's, it does it talks about like you've got the map of the area you're building i think again it's the idea is that you're pairing this with a dungeon you've just created so yeah. maybe mapping stuff like that but again i think it's good to have that moment going okay you got the purpose of it you got the level leaf out counting you kind of know what it is where does it appear mm -hmm. and and then pinpointing that and it just really helps you on that front so yeah map, mapping it out is quite key here i think as well I, sometimes it almost becomes like in a lot of the kind of the complex traps i think in as well i think some of them would probably benefit from from some visualization agreed uh, like, 100%. Like, but, but unfortunately i think that is the case of like when it comes to complex traps and stuff like that is a lot of them kind of veer towards describing entire rooms mm -hmm. and that's that's just the nature of like the kind of you know the complex tracks is they have a lot of moving parts and stuff like that mm. and sometimes they can be hard to like physically like draw and stuff like that again i know in like like, uh, was it Tomb of Annihilation stuff like that? There are some rooms that are very hard to both describe and visualize. There's like, I, I'm trying to think of like, there's one like an, at like an angle, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or I, I can't remember exactly and stuff like that. I, I don't think we, we didn't face it when I was playing through it. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's with a simple, simple traps, again, you don't, like, they are, as they are, but complex maps, because you are now entering kind of like, you know, initiative and stuff like that, there are places where things happen and mm -hmm. there are times when those things happen. 
you mm. kind of need to give the players more information. And actually, that you just reminded me because there was a book I was going to recommend and I completely forgot it. And then you reminded me because yeah. of the map stuff. So I got uh, recently Traps, Puzzles and Dungeons, the Game Master's Guide to it. It was a black cover with lots of various sort of uh, outlines of a skull, obviously. Yeah. What's interesting... Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah. What's interesting, so it has two page spreads of traps and an image to go with it. So you can easily visualise it and see it. And then you could always just put that or photocopy that page in it. And there's they've got um, a one-shot adventures, which are... I don't think they're fully like Tomb of Horrors style, but they've got mm. enough to be like, okay, so this is how you'd put them in these traps in here and here and here. Mm. You know, they, they, they expand from like full room stuff proper puzzly like tight ones as well and yeah so i'd recommend that that one's got uh, a special piece by three black halflings they've designed a little oh, nice. for that as well and that's come out very recently and i was just reading it through and it's like again it, it maybe gives that temptation of it before you're like oh i want that monster here i want that monster there but some of the traps i was like that could be cool so maybe something that you could replace something mm -hmm. and make it a little bit if you're like i need to slow them down a little bit because they're racing through as you were saying mm -hmm. here's one that they can do for half a session and we'll see how far they get in, in that sort of sense that's what's great about most traps is like the, the complex ones and stuff like that is generally they're quite easy to kind of fit in most kind of dungeons or places like again mm -hmm. it is always dungeons it's just the go-to of like so many of the designs they're so easy to drag and drop into kind of like different rooms mm -hmm. and that, in fairness though i think that's Part of the experience, like if your campaign or if the adventure you're kind of playing and stuff like that is that classic like dungeoneering experiences for that, the players are expecting or wanting traps, and and that's mm. that's that kind of balance of like give the players what they want, you know, let there be traps in which they get the upper hand and they you know they they cut the trip wire, they kind of get out, and there there will also be ones where they're just like okay, well I I stepped on the pressure plate, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> or you know I didn't oh, oh, I didn't have yeah. I didn't have the bag of sand, I just took the idol. <laughs> And then it talks about obviously the elements. So this is again looking at complex traps again. So you've got the active elements, the constant elements, and the dynamic elements. And these are basically how it, you, it talks about actions and, and how it progresses going up, right? So obviously active elements, as soon as you step into the corridor or as soon as you step into on, on the pressure plate, you trip the wire, that's when it sort of starts to go. And then you've got the constant ones of stuff that's constantly going on at the end of each turn, at each round. And then the dynamic ones is when it's sort of, uh oh, it's still a threat and it's speeding up or the effects you try to get through it in some way it gives an example of uh, a room that's flooding which I, again you don't really have that too much in D&D there's always things crushing and I think flooding yeah I'm, yeah. I'm all up for being like oh I, no I, I think so is it swimming like you have to deal with the swimming and then third dimension it gets it gets kind of complicated true 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 yeah I think I saw because uh, I've been watching a little bit of Dimension 20 they had a, a very cool battle map. they're in the sewers and stuff and the water was rising every time and they had like additional like um like it was like a clear place thing where they could lift it up every five centimeters. Oh, it, that's it really cool. Very bloody cool. But of course they were like, okay, we're going to hop onto the next little bit of suit. Oh no, oh yeah. no, we've left one of them behind. You know, and they're like, and there's crocodiles. And yeah, I'd watch uh, Unsleeping City. I'd watch it. <laughs> What's quite great about like, I guess like dynamic elements or like scaling elements is mm -hmm. you can kind of give the players like, if it's in like, take, take that scenario and stuff like that, is when they, the players enter the suit and stuff like that, they have a few rounds to kind of understand the mechanics Yes. Before it becomes a deadly threat. Yes. And yes. I think that's that's kind of what you kind of want and stuff. Uh, like uh, unless it is like the kind of like the style of dungeon is like you take wrong wrong step, you die. Yep. Th that's the thing. People, you know, if people who are going for that experience love that stuff. Like if you're going, with, what is it the kind of like a meat grinder like thing where yes. you have like a bunch of like level zero characters and you kind of work through. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing in like a more established campaign and stuff, like that, you can throw really deadly traps in their way and stuff. Like that. But there are fun ways to kind of design in which it's almost like a tutorial yes <laughs> like the early rounds is the trap winding up and you can see yes okay the water is filling up that's not a problem right now i can see when it would get a problem and then mm. step two is like oh every now and then we're getting electrocuted from the ceiling i mm. can see that that would be a bit of a problem yeah. oh the water's still rising oh and the electricity is getting you know it, uh -oh, uh -oh. It, i imagine it wouldn't be too fun if the two you know it, it's it's those sort of systems that you can kind of play around with well, i'll say like my favorite example they did of the complex trap is the jester's one where basically portal that a, a sphere starts rolling down goes and disappears at one end and appears at another end but because it's going faster and faster and faster yeah. so yeah it builds up you're like oh okay we took some damage but it's okay we've got a oh god it's back again and working out how to slow it down or stop get rid of the portals or something like like that i i love that one because that that the ticking time bomb of that one mm -hmm. it's going to get very quick and it's going to be you were not going to stop it you gotta yeah. you gotta you've got like three or four rounds what do you do uh, mm -hmm. on that front the opposite end of the argument is that traps like this and stuff are, are, are deadly yes. <laughs> like like and, and these <laughs> are, it's like 
and you kind of have to be aware of what your players have yes and and their abilities of that because you can design a trap that through maybe you know the players using their resources and stuff like that they aren't equipped to solve or fix or get out and then you've just you've just created a death room yeah so you know i it goes back to what you're saying about the, like the puzzle solution it's not bad design to have more than one solution to a trap mm-hmm especially if things start going <laughs> going like the, the wrong way. It's all about balancing expectations. Oh, you know, if the players going into it are expecting it to be like a death trap. And and if they, if they go into the room and they all die, that's how it goes. Yeah. If you just wanted to throw a, a trap in as like a new type of challenge and stuff like that, you have to think about, you know, the, the systems you're kind of working with. Yeah, it's interesting. And I completely agree just to sort of finish off on that, the, the managing expectations stuff. I recently interviewed somebody who was like, I always just tell them what the DC is before they roll because that's more exciting than them rolling going ah 19 and then obviously there is that pressure and again i don't know if you've had it yourself to be like yeah you make it uh even if they haven't whereas if you tell them straight away they know mm-hmm. and it's more exciting for the table because then you know they'll get the they get the the 20 and they go yeah, rather yeah. than just the natural 20 and then you're like well oh, but the dc was 23 you know yeah. it's you it's so i i'm definitely gonna ascribe to that school now of going telling people what the dc is now because I, I know there's that worry about like oh but i don't want to um the surprise but i think the similar thing here is that's managing that expectation going okay you're going to a dungeon you've read lots of information about it you know it's a paranoid thing like Mm -hmm. you know even if it's like clunky exposition i'd Mm -hmm. rather my players have a good time rather than be completely steamrolled and go what a waste of time we've lost everything yeah i want them to enjoy the game i I think this is where like the cliches of like blood blood writing on the walls (laughs) blood 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 no or, or you know like the idea of like you find the skeleton of an explorer who has a diary and stuff like that there are so many cliches kind of existence that like yes. you can kind of use to pre-warn small things like that. Sometimes you can place these clues like they can find the explorer after they've gone through a trap. And that could mm-hmm. be the case of like, oh, that's how we should have done it. And then, yes. you know, you know, it's it, it, it's it's fun things like that. I like that. If you are concerned that you are designing a complex trap that might have, you know, a lot going on, mm-hmm. yeah, don't, don't be afraid to foreshadow some things, you know. Mm-hmm. If you know the players are going to this dungeon that you designed ahead of time and stuff like that. Have it so they meet someone who's a, a past adventurer who've gone into the dungeon and left. Yeah. And can say, this is all I know. I got to this room. Yes. Three people died in it. Yeah. That that can kind of make the story more gripping because then, mm. the, the, you know, it, it's one setting expectations. It's two also kind of like excitement because it's like, yeah, there's a murder room. We, we know there's a murder room. We know what the room looks like roughly. Again, depending on how your relationship is with your players. Like if you said, oh, there's a murder room, they'll be like... Oh, I bet we can do it though. Yeah. I bet we can, because players are silly like that, yeah. aren't they? Like, and yeah, I'd rather them be excited about it rather than going, "Well, we're going to avoid that," you know, like because you could set up other traps and stuff. Yeah. And then just finally to mention, because we mentioned this initiative stuff as well. So everyone rolls initiative, and there's complex trap. It sort of talks about it having three kinds of initiatives, sort of like slow, where it goes on uh, initiative ten, mm-hmm. fast, where it goes on initiative twenty, and then very fast. It goes on twenty and ten, which I love. Um, because uh, again, I've again because I've just mentioned it. Uh, Alien RPG, the monsters in that. It's a it's a card drawing system where everyone takes a card between one and ten, and that's the order they go in from low to high. Definitely. Yeah, and the the aliens. Spoiler alert: they because they are very quick, they get to take two initiatives. Oh okay. uh, So obviously you're like. Oh no! I seem to be going first and last. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I, I do like that, uh, and and then of course using it for different uh, parts of the trap as well. You know, mm-hmm. Whether it's the, the 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 blades or if it's you know, or if it's the crushing thing or the fire. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of fun to be had and playing around. And yeah, you, like I said, there's no harm in it just being like it's a slow trap, but it's going to be deadly. You know. Mm-hmm. And I think I, you can have a lot of fun with, with changing and. T- and and doing these things essentially yeah. and, and like you said experimenting which i'm really excited about and the fact that so many complex traps are designed through initiative and combat and stuff like that mm. throw some monsters in the mix throw some creatures in there yes like you know? absolutely i love my favorite one like trope that i i i, I don't use enough is the idea of rival adventure adventuring parties <gasps> i know um <sighs> and the idea of two groups in the same trap like two in the same trap room not necessarily fighting each other Mm-mm. But going for the same treasure, mm. I, I think that that's such a that's such a cool kind of dynamic because then it's it's everyone against the room. Yeah, it's a proper Tomb Raider type style, like time trial sort of thing as yeah. well. Yeah, or, or you know, like again, aspects of the trap could be the creatures itself, like again, mm. uh, the, the the classics and stuff like that, poison snake rooms. You know, or, or mm. things like that, or you know, oh, it's a dragon. I don't know. The trap's a dragon. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, <I> <laughs> like, shit. Yeah, the, I'll be honest. That's not the most imaginative trap. 
you can make. <laughs> no wonder, no wonder you didn't get past the first round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, I like the idea of like the first trap is like uh, I don't know, it's like a, a bear trap on a rope. And you go, yeah. okay, we can get this. is going to be easy. The next room, it's a dragon. That's the, yeah, the that trap. Surprise. Is... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the cobalt making yeah. the dungeon. And it's like, oh no, I've not finished this room. <laughs> you could have a lot of fun with like the idea of a room that kind of uses some version of polymorph or yes. animate object in which nothing in the room is as it seems. And mm. messing around with objects is like, okay, I grab the spoon, touching the spoon deactivates the magic. It's not a spoon. It's a dragon. <laughs> or, yeah. you know, talent of a dragon going. What the? What yeah, are you doing? Yeah, traps are a lot of fun. It's because you can you can get wild and crazy with them. And I think the only thing I can suggest in terms of like if you want to see traps in action that aren't necessarily like published material, you know, sure. The two that I can think of off the top of my head, there's the Rick and Morty versus D and D starter set, which I don't know if you've played at all. No, I that, Basically, because we did an episode on that, uh, but essentially, uh, Rick, the character of Rick, is the dungeon master who is just an asshole. <laughs> so he's the, obviously the creator of the uh, the the dungeon of Rickness, you oh, know yeah. that sort of thing. So, and it's it's great because obviously you could ch- you know all the traps and stuff like that. They're obviously a bit sci fi themed, but also pretty. It's quite funny. There's definitely the 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 the, the pinch and and the owl sort of effect of stuff where they do stuff and you're like ah oh, idiots. Uh, so there's that's one element of it which can be fun as again setting expectations yeah. so your players are going going well this is rubbish you had a lot of fun and i was like i was playing a character <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a commitment to the role exactly or you have patrick roffus's uh the ice star facility uh, adventure that he ran for acquisitions incorporated mm-hmm. which had that whole sort of theme of like okay we've got interns they're going through certain rooms and sure that was a bit more puzzling a bit more themed because obviously it's like first room is a catchphrase room but you could easily add so many more traps uh, to get to the end and like have monsters and stuff in that as well and there's there's one, one of my favorite rooms in it because we were talking about that no magic thing is that it talks about like a team bonding thing where you have to get across a, a, like a 10 foot gap and it's uh 50 foot down and there's obviously something down there and it goes at the end uh, magic's been deactivated in this room <laughs> it hasn't but the fact you've said it means that there you go oh they panic and then eventually if somebody uses it you reward them for creativity <laughs> which i love i love that yeah it's little things like that yeah. so I, I like the idea that you could have a narrator or like some sort of system like like the dungeon master the the uh, the creator of this 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 trap is like oh interesting hadn't thought of that you know yeah. like uh, and giving i'm scoring them as they're going through yeah. this this realm it turns like the traps into like a game of like gladiator or like uh, yeah, oh uh, yes yeah. absolutely and yeah and you're facing off against a rival team of gladiators <laughs> see, see what i think is, is amazing is because like traps are such like an iconic part of, of tabletop rpgs that mm-hmm. i i think is they've been around long enough that the meta aspect of traps is it's fun to explore Yes. You know, the idea of like traps for traps sake. I think you can have a lot of fun with like, you know, if you just want a break, mm. if your campaign is city based, have something like a trap convention. You know, like the idea where where Oh my god, yes. And and that way you it's the best kind of thing of where you can let the players kind of experience get these kind of contained trap things as a fat maybe without the fear of death because yes not, uh, you know it's a convention they don't want all or or maybe that's the appeal dare you face <laughs> yeah the, oh, i'm i you can't see my face this is, but i am so excited by this such a simple concept of a trap convention yeah. i'm so hundred it, I have it, it bring, you know it brings all the, the the engineers from like you know across uh, uh, engineers or wizards from like you know across like the country and stuff like that, to bring their best traps and they you have an audience it's, it's very much like the dark room where mm-hmm. you know somebody gets taken off and you're like you're dark you yeah. die! You yeah. die from the from the from the from the ceiling. That's why you look up so you can see the, the spectators. Yeah. And you know, maybe it's a case of like, uh, yeah, each trap is based on like reward or like ranked based on like how many adventures they like mm. killed, or you know, yes. like like and stuff like that. And, yeah. I, so I, I I, and that. that's what I think is like. I feel like that's an easy way to kind of like road test any traps that you've come up. Yeah. With, or, or, or or kind of explore the more wacky ones. I mean, yeah. I think I think traps are innately kind of. Yeah, I don't know. My my at least my approach to rap is uh, I think they are comical. They're a little bit funny. Yes, they, they, they have to be, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there there is always something going to be funny about like a, a player whoever is falling in a pit trap. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know yeah, what it yeah, is. Yeah. Like, you you fall down a hole. That's you, that's funny. You, you think, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> you are now like I said. You laughing. You're having a good time. Now you're in a hole. And yeah. And, and now everyone's laughing at you. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you've been spiked a little bit, but you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Get exactly. out. And that's what I mean. It's and sometimes you know what like that's that that is funny. Almost like the kind of dealing with high level characters and stuff like that. Yes. High, yeah. Like a level twenty character falling into a pit trap that does four damage 
it's it's fun. That's funny. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like, it becomes almost like like you are so powerful that this it, it, again an inconvenience. An inco- yeah, an inconvenient threat. I love that. Uh, what well, what is great about uh, yeah the tabletop RPGs and stuff like that is there are so many ways to introduce traps mm. and do it in a way that is is fun and exciting in ways that players kind of know what they're getting into. There really isn't a limit of what a trap can do. Um, yeah. Obviously. What I love about uh, as we kind of talking through the structure of Xanthor and stuff, like that, it gives you such a great structure to kind of create yes. these these experiences or just essentially encounters. Because I think yeah. fundamentally and stuff, like that, it, this is encounter design mm-hmm. just with traps at the heart of it. Uh, yeah, it's such a robust structure. It doesn't need any, it, again. It's it again. It's very simplistic in its very. But I'm I was very because again, if you looked at the DM's guide, it just talks to you about here are some traps, here's stuff to consider, have fun, and you're like, yeah, but what if I want to do my own? And then yeah. I think there's like a very small change that is done with them and expanding a little bit on them and how to do them. Yeah, really straightforward. And then we've gone through like literally just said like literally just think about these things, use the tables as an example. But have fun and try them out. And it's always the same. As soon as you make something or homebrew something, just try it out with your players. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, yeah, just do it again. There's, there's a later point and change the name of it and all that sort of thing. And I, I guess that's why, the, yeah, I guess it goes back to like the, the, the cliches. Like, I feel like so many, I've seen so many adventure tropes or magic items that are essentially, I, I mean, I've even done it myself. I've created a, essentially uh, a dungeon in a magic item. <gasps> like, the, yes. the kind of like the pocket dungeon. <gasps> stuff like that. Yes, like, yes, I, yes. I think that's one of the first things I did is, is someone had this Senox sphere, which was essentially like a, a dungeon in a, in, a sphere, in a sphere. Amazing. Uh, and it was my job to kind of, uh, yeah, you know, what, actually, it's funny. Now, now that we're chatting stuff like that, I'm remembering all the stuff that I've done. There you go. There you go. Uh, but that was a murder dungeon in, in a ball. Love it. And was it, I think it also existed in some form in um, Critical Role. They had like mm-hmm. the happy fun time ball, that they called it. Yeah, it was not happy or fun. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> and, and there's other rounds of about it where it's like there are so many ways where you can let the players almost like self-pace their trap engagement um mm-hmm. if they're feeling like oh we have a trap in a while <laughs> let's let's you know let's have a go let's yeah. have a go oh matt well thank you we've come to the end we've talked for an hour about traps if you can believe but i, I yeah i know man but <laughs> I'm, I'm actually really excited and i feel now like I, I now feel more confident in the sense of like oh i need to put in a trap in here i just love that idea of a trap convention so i'm like right that's the next that's that we'll, we'll break right? okay you've got three traps to go through <laughs> and we'll work it out from there and i just yeah i really like that but thank you so much yeah. for for joining me and, and chatting to me all about your love of traps as well i'm so glad I, I found a kindred spirit here but before we sign off can you can you tell us where can we find your social media do you have anything to plug i know you've been super busy or any recommendations that you'd like to to give us yeah no so yeah uh, yeah you can find me at whippy rights on on twitter at the moment uh, for as long as, as long as that's that, that's around oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, not to date this episode or anything like that <laughs> yeah so uh, most recently uh, i i put together the esper genesis i did a hostile takeover um esper genesis is essentially like a sci-fi fifth edition um which is on the star forges guild oh. i think which is on drive through um, yes. But that, that's also a little bit of adventure writing that I've kind of been doing. I'm mm-hmm. brief hiatus from from tabletop RPG stuff at the moment. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, no, I did want to shout out Beneath the Waves, Ooh. which is a kind of uh, it's a project by one of my fr- friends, Kai, he, uh, a co-led it, which is essentially everything you need for water and like underwater based campaigns. Oh, amazing! It, it is beautifully illustrated. A lot of love went into it. Yeah, I, thought, I just yeah yeah. It's always good. I'm not I'm not making stuff at the moment, so I should I should yell about. What... I love that. So wait, is that on DM's Guild then? That, that is on the DM's Guild at the moment. Yes, uh, there is uh, there's a bunch of subclasses, rules for like buoyancy and all that kind of like like Classic. We, we we spoke about water here, so I feel like it, it's not yeah. It may be useful if you're making a water based trap. Um, yeah. Beneath the waves. <laughs> Beneath the waves, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll definitely make sure we've got um, put it in the show notes as well. Yeah. Uh, and from me, I, I run What Am I Rolling? A twice monthly RPG one shot podcast. As always, it's going very well. Episodes will be out. I am I'm busily doing a backlog of stuff. Uh, we've had Paranoia's finally come out. We've got interviews with uh, the uh, the writer of the Alien RPGs uh, that yeah. got done. So that was very exciting. Uh, we've got we we recently at Dragon Meet and we met a few people there who'd been on the podcast, which was actually really lovely actually to meet people going you were interviewed me and i was like i remember i think it's because it's so <laughs> internet uh, wibbly wobbly all that sort of thing but yeah that's still going on and uh we have an offer code for dm's book club which is uh, dmbc for 10 percent off uh, your first order at third space gaming which is uh, your friendly local game store in burnley um they've got lots of terrain and stuff like that they probably have a lot of magic cards i've recently met got into magic nice. uh my my partner's really into it and i i at first i was like oh no i have to remember all these things and everyone's got their own game going on however we did like a a 
a, a draft, mm-hmm. like a booster draft. That was amazingly fun. Yeah. Cause suddenly I was like, here's a pack of cars that I've got. And I'm like, right, I need to make this into something that will protect me from four other people. Uh, oh, I mean, I... As, as someone who recently, like I played magic for the first time after a long hiatus, I, I know the feeling I've got, I've got the itch again. It's, yes. it's, it's, it's fun. Like you said, they, they, they know what they're doing with those, those pieces of cardboard. I'll give them that. Oh yeah. You, you're going to get yours out now. Yeah. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I recently, I've, so I've invested in um, the Infinity one that's just come out, yeah. which I don't know if you know much about Infinity, but essentially it feels very uh, board game, you play very role play in the sense of like, from what I've heard is that it just makes up rules. So for example, in the previous edition, it said like any object on the table in front of you could be a plus one, one counter. Yeah. And they were like, there's chairs, <laughs> there's this. And I'm like, this is the this I was like this is it yeah. so yeah so I've got the recent box it's all about carnivals and stickers and all that sort yeah. of thing so I'm like I'm very excited about that one yeah some, some of my famous ones was like uh in previous versions I think they had things where like because it was in a draft format you would get people from other tables to like come <sighs> and like I it was I don't yeah they, it's, a, it's a giggle, it's a, See, it's that, a giggle. That, that's that's the stuff whereas before I was like oh it's that serious and there's lots of laws about I'm all for up for like it feels very much like I don't know if you ever play the the card game flux at all no. whereas there's all, all it is is that you you have a card limit, and the rule is like it, the rule is like uh, draw one, place one, and the goal is this. But every card you put down adds another rule or something different oh. to it, to the point where you're just like, okay, here's this, and I've completed this agenda. And, oh no! And it's just yeah. So it's that same thing. I feel like with Infinity, but everyone's playing slightly different games all yeah, at yeah. the same time, and yeah, it can be overwhelming. But it's so much fun. Yeah. I yeah, I've I've been slightly converted, and I'm a bit annoyed that I wasn't in there sooner. So yes. <laughs> Uh, so that's my recommendation is check out some magic stuff um, over Christmas and see see if any of the new sets are interesting. But I, small, Infinity sounds fun. Small indie game uh, with Magic the Gathering. You might not yeah, have heard of it. <laughs> you might not have heard of them. Uh, nothing to do with, yeah. I don't know, Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much, Matt. It's been a pleasure to have you on. No, thank you very much. Yeah, I think the hour has flown by. 